All right. The Democrats aren't the only ones with a choice this primary season. As Kristen was just talking about with the president's spokesperson, the man challenging President Trump for the Republican nomination, former Massachusetts governor, former Libertarian Party vice presidential nominee, Bill Weld. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Weldon. Uh, uh, Kaylee McEnany uh, with Christian Fisher just a couple of minutes ago, the can Trump campaign spokeswoman saying she doesn't take you seriously. The RNC saying she doesn't take you seriously. Uh, why should voters? Well, they're keeping up a, a bold front, a bold face on it. But, uh, you know, a year is a long time in politics. I was around in the 91 92 primary mm -hmm. where George H.W. Uh, Bush's uh, popularity was 91% in December of 91, right which is War. a month and a half before the New Hampshire primary, where Pat Buchanan came in, didn't even win. He got 37%. Right. It was the beginning of the end for George H.W. Bush. So I'm, I'm this glad is you, not a vain errand by any means. I'm glad you brought that up because in recent political history, there have been two nomination challenges to sitting U.S. presidents. Jimmy Carter faced Ted Kennedy in 1980, and as you just pointed out, uh, George H.W. Bush taken on by Pat Buchanan. And Ford faced Ronald Kennedy, Reagan in 76. Who had been elected. Good point. Uh, there is a common thread to all three of those, which is the sitting president lost. Is it worth playing spoiler if that happens? Is it worth having a Democratic president uh, rather than four more years of President it, Trump? It's, it's not spoiler. I mean, I, I'm not in love with the job being done in Washington. I think uh, I'm going to the White House Correspondents' Dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised the president has forbidden uh, the administration officials from going because I don't think he really wants people to know everything that he's, uh, that he's doing. But I'll give you one big example. You mentioned jobs. Uh, the, we're going to lose like 20 percent of the jobs in this country to artificial intelligence and robotics and drones and machine learning and self-driving vehicles in the next 15 years, maybe even 10 years. Okay. I don't see anyone making plans to educate those workers so they can get the... Well, there's high, a lot of Democrats talking about it. Higher wage, the higher wage jobs that are going to be the replacement workers. All right. Well, let's talk about getting your message out. We're going to look at fundraising among Democratic presidential candidates. Uh, the president's already raised about $100 million for his reelection. Uh, Sanders on top with 20.6 million, Warren 16.4. You go all the way down to Buttigieg around 7.0. Biden not on that list because uh, he didn't raise in the first quarter, but he raised $6 million in his first 24 hours. You haven't declared any fundraising totals. Where on this list would you stand? Uh, I, I just spent last week in New York fundraising in the millions, but not not 25 million, but I uh, just started. <laughs> and uh, I'm confident based on the response we're getting, we will be adequately funded in New Hampshire and beyond. I'll, I'll run hard in all six New England states who's, and all the mid-Atlantic states. Who's giving you money? Uh, well, don't forget, I was governor twice and right. I've been around the National Party and I raised said. a lot of money for the Republican National Committee in the past. So I, I know a lot of names. and. Uh, they may not say it publicly, but they're not all thrilled with the situation. Well, they're, they're going to have to say it publicly because the, the fundraising is no, going to be public. No, uh, sorry to get into the weeds, but there's also an anonymous, it's called a 501c4, a nonprofit. Ooh. So making anonymous contributions at weld2020.org is, is possible. And the Democrats don't care. They're giving to me. They don't care who know, knows it. But a lot of the R's, including some big R's, mm. no, they want to do the anonymous C4, and we're only too happy to take that money. Very, very interesting. So you're still not going to give us any names? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> i got to keep raising money. <laughs> uh, all, all, all right. Uh, what is going to be your one differentiator? You're in New Hampshire trying to make this argument. If you, you, know, you get 38% in New Hampshire, you pull something like Pat Buchanan pulled off, yeah. that's going to be huge. Yeah. Is there enough traditional Republicans in New Hampshire to do that? Well, I hope there's enough real Republicans, because I'm an economic conservative, and Mr. Trump, frankly, is not. He hasn't but vetoed an, a an single dollar. An economic conservative doesn't sit around talking about job training. No, I'm talking about how to make them get jobs, because I know the best social program is a job. Uh, when, I, when I was governor, I cut spending in real dollars year over year, and I was ranked by the Wall Street Journal uh, and the Cato Institute the most fiscally conservative governor in the United States. And this is as a newly minted Republican in Massachusetts. I, I, there have been no Republicans for 20 years, but then I was the first of four. We had a run of four Republicans in a row because we were pretty good stewards of, uh, of the taxpayers' money. My motto always was, there's no such thing as government money, there's only taxpayers' money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot in Washington who don't seem to quite understand that paradigm. We appreciate right. you being here, sir. Uh, and come back and talk to us whether you'll tell us who's giving you money or not, all right? Great, Leland. Thank good, you. Good to see you, sir. Thanks so much.